Hi, welcome to another session of Ask a Finder. Today we have a question from Cindy and she asks, if portfolio assets are maintained using modern portfolio theory, who makes the decisions about what percentages go into each of the asset classes? Does Charles Schwab make that decision? Does Pathfinder make that decision? What about Mark Manson's firm? Well, Cindy, that's a good question, and so we're, we're going to spend some time talking about modern portfolio theory today. And it's really a very simple concept, but it's based on a lot of academics, many years of hard work. In fact, the people that uh, have uh, been the proponents of that particular theory have, in fact, been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize over the years for economics. So that uh, person is, in fact, a fellow named Harry Markowitz. There's other very uh, prominent uh, professors, such as William Sharp. Uh, professors French and Fama that have refined that particular theory. Now really it's more than the theory. It goes back 80 years and so we want to talk about what modern portfolio theory is first of all. What modern portfolio really does is it is a concept that is able to show us how we can measure risk to return in a portfolio. It's kind of interesting when clients come into our office many times they say well I want this much return 20 percent return but I want this much risk that goes along with that. Well, everybody would like to have great returns and no risk, but that's hard to come by. But there is a way to be able to measure volatility or what we call risk in the form of what's known as standard deviation, which is kind of a fancy term, but that's what we call risk, standard deviation. And the smaller the number for that particular risk or that standard deviation, of course, the lower the return. So if it's possible to measure historically what certain types of investments have done in terms of the actual return, in terms of standard deviation or volatility, we can actually construct a portfolio that gives us some expected outcomes. Now, <clears throat> we have to remember that the smaller the number, the smaller the return. So as an example, if we're talking about CDs, certificates of deposit at the bank, that particular standard deviation would be very small. On the other hand, if we're talking about an asset class like gold, or an item like gold, uh, that would be a natural resource, that standard deviation is very, very large. In other words, the volatility is really quite large, and so the risk is very large. Think of it in terms of like a wavelength. A standard deviation for a CD is very, very low in its volatility, but the standard deviation for gold would be a very high and wavy length. The, Heights would be higher and the lows would be much lower. Well, remember, uh, we can construct a portfolio based on these historic returns and risks because they've been measured. There's a mathematical way of determining how these particular groups have done. So how is a portfolio constructed and who does it? Well, quite frankly, you might be kind of disappointed to hear that we don't do it, Mark Manson doesn't do it, Charles Schwab doesn't do it, it's done mathematically more or less by a, by a computer. I think a computer would be the best way to describe it. And so we know that, as we mentioned, certain groups will be given certain types of returns for the risk. Now we use in our particular practice what we call 19 groups or asset classes to go by. Let me give you an example of a few of those asset classes. Large cap growth or large company growth, large company value, small company growth, small company value, international growth, international value, and so forth and so on. There's over 19 groups, and we'll call them asset classes, that are carefully measured to give us an expected or historic return for the amount of risk that particular uh, asset class uh, has been measured for. So, how do we construct the portfolio? Well, that's based a lot on what the client's uh, expected return and risk tolerance would be. And there's basically four that we use in the firm. We use a conservative portfolio for conservative client, and that would be measured as 75% fixed investments and about 25% stock investments. Moderate portfolio, which would be 50-50. Growth portfolio, which would be 25% fixed investments and 75% growth or stock investments. And finally, aggressive growth, which would be about 5% uh, fixed, very, very small amount of fixed, and 95%, which would be uh, your stock investments. So we know that if we construct the portfolio mathematically uh, to have more weighting in riskier stocks, 
the potential is for greater return. Let me give you an example. If we have a conservative portfolio, we know that that particular portfolio will only hold about 7.5% in international holdings. On the other hand, if it's an aggressive investor, that particular portfolio will hold about 45%. And so it's really a mathematical answer. We know that if we want to have a certain amount of return, which is a greater amount of return, we have to also plug in the numbers that are going to give us a little bit more volatility or risk. If that person wants a smaller return, then that outcome is going to be a lower return. We know that we're going to use a a uh, larger number of fixed holdings in that investment portfolio and the risk will be smaller. It's just common sense in that regard. So to answer your question fully, Cindy, I would say that basically it's a mathematical uh, uh, it's a mathematical decision. There's nobody there that's basically picking the stocks, that's picking the investments. Of course we don't believe in stock picking, market timing, or track record investing. So when we buy groups of these asset classes we buy literally, or Charles Schwab buys literally the entire, all the companies in that particular asset class, with a few exceptions. And so we want to be able to capture all the returns that that asset class offers, but we want to go ahead and tailor those percentage holds based on the client's investment temperament. I hope that will answer your question. If you have any additional questions about how we do the portfolio and how that particular uh, modern portfolio theory works in practice at Pathfinder, please just give us a call. Until next time, have a great day and a wonderful investment experience.